What up, space fans? Jack here. As you can see, we're trying something new with this Starship update. The big news this week is the delivery of GSE hardware, including water deluge equipment, from Kennedy Space Center to Boca Chica via barge. The big question is, when will it all be installed? Will it be before Booster 7 static fire? Will it be before the orbital test flight? Or after? We'll discuss that, plus an expansion to the tank farm and preparations for Booster 7's aforementioned static fire. Our journey starts at the end, well at least for several recent starships anyway, and that is of course the Rocket Garden. Ship 24 was brought there, presumably to protect it in case of an anomaly with Booster 7's impending 33 engine static fire, and for final preparations ahead of the orbital test flight. We've gotten a lot of questions about how they'll lift Ship 24 back onto the SPMTs to roll it back to the launch site if they've removed these lifting points. Well, an SPMT can squat, roll under the Starship stand, lift it up, and then roll 24 back to the launch site. Speaking of orbital flights, the payload capacity of Starship has been updated on SpaceX's website with a new expendable variant. SpaceX now aims to carry up to 150 tons in a reusable configuration and a whopping 250 metric tons if expended. Before this update, the website just said, quote, with the ability to carry in excess of 100 metric tons to Earth orbit. Moving back here to the launch site, we see Booster 7 and Ship 25 awaiting further testing. Ship 25 is right over my shoulder here, like some kind of chrome cosmic parrot, on suborbital Pad B, which I guess at this point we should probably just call Pad B. The next step for Ship 25 is, of course, static fire testing. But not much has happened with it in the last week or two, as SpaceX is clearly prioritizing the work on the debut launch of a full orbital stack. It's still anyone's guess if Ship 25 will be rolled back to the launch site or if it'll stay on Pad B during Booster 7 static fire testing. As, well, that could include, shall we say, some high energy events. Speaking of, a full 33 engine static fire with Booster 7, of course, still hasn't happened. With road closures getting scheduled and cancelled repeatedly, SpaceX seems to be working on the vehicle and the launch mount before moving into this highly anticipated test. One of Booster 7's hydraulic pressure units, or HPU, is still missing. This missing piece might be related to the delays, as this unit would be used to move and operate the thrust vector controls of the engines. Thankfully, for future boosters, any HPU problems will hopefully be non-existent, since they will be using electrically powered thrust vector controls. Work on the orbital launch mount has predictably continued without stopping. This includes work on the wiring and cabling at the top of the launch mount and some fresh new paint on the legs for the mount itself. This paint is likely not only for cosmetic purposes, but might serve other functions, such as protection against corrosion from the salty beach air in Boca Chica, and perhaps even ablative protection of the legs from the fury of 33 Raptor engines firing next to them. It's not all about the orbital launch mount though, as we saw some work being done on the chopsticks as well. This time on the hydraulics that control their opening, closing, and horizontal movement during lifts. Boy, hydraulics can be a pain, can't they? Sadly, we don't know if these are repairs, upgrades, or just a checkup, but clearly there's plenty of work left to be done on stage zero. Speaking of stage zero, new construction is going up to the west of the orbital launch pad. This new construction could end up hosting an expansion for the tank farm, or even end up being where SpaceX installs the water deluge hardware we've spotted arriving in Boca Chica. More on that in a moment. Back at the build site, we've seen various sections shuffled around, including Ship 27's nose cone. It was moved outside the high bay and close to the mid bay. We might see more stacking operations soon, as Ship 26 is already fully stacked in the high bay. Of course, SpaceX isn't just building starships and boosters in Starbase, they're also building the machine that builds them a massive assembly line for these vehicles of the future. You may have noticed that Ship 27 and Ship 26 don't have aero surfaces or thermal protection tiles. We don't know what SpaceX wants to test with these two ships, but they could be used to test orbital refilling, aka refueling, or entire fuel depots, which of course are needed for the Artemis program. Next up, it's a Raptor hoedown. Booster 7 had three Raptors replaced in the last week. Here, we see one of the replacement engines transported to the pad on a flatbed. It seems as though that recent inspections and testing have revealed some faulty or damaged Raptor engines which for whatever reason needed replacement. We'll of course keep our eyes open for any additional Raptors headed to or from the launch site. 
The work platform below the launch mount, which SpaceX, I kid you not, refers to as the dance floor, I'm not making this up, was removed to allow the Raptor installation stand to be moved into place. The dance floor provides a flat surface below the booster for workers to work on the pad, inspect the Raptors, and work on all manner of things more easily. However, installing a Raptor needs more room, which is why the Raptor work platform exists. This mobile platform can be moved in to install new engines on the pad in a short amount of time. If you know what the fun name SpaceX has for the Raptor work platform, let us know in the comments. Here, we see a Raptor being lowered from the booster. This process is surprisingly fast, and SpaceX did the replacements in a matter of hours. Over the days, they replaced no less than three engines on Booster 7. Over at Pad B, there's been a parade of concrete trucks coming and going, with a concrete placing boom hard at work. It looks as though the former dirt berm is being concreted over, similar to how the dirt orbital tank farm berm has been concreted over and made far more robust. Next up, some sad news for fans of Ship 22. It has been scrapped. Space is at a premium around the build site, and so SpaceX finally had to get rid of the prototype to make way for Ship 24's hopefully temporary placement in the rocket garden. Ship 22 has already been chopped up, and the major chunks of it are in the process of being further sliced and diced to make room for future prototypes. Over in the ring yard, which is what we call the area between the mid-bay, high bay, and construction tents, we can see a slew of barrel sections for future starships and boosters, some equipped with their thermal protection system tiles already. There's even a booster aft dome hiding in there. A barge arrived from Kennedy Space Center on Friday, carrying ground support equipment from the previous, now outdated Starship pad layout at Historic Launch Complex 39A. The equipment on the barge included four smaller tanks that are most definitely for water, since they lacked standard cryogenic tank equipment. And there was, of course, a bunch of large pipes and manifolds for water deluge. The smart money is on the bet that these will be used as a deluge system for the orbital launch pad in Boca Chica. The barge also carried three large liquid nitrogen tanks, most likely for the Massey test site, where SpaceX wants to conduct testing of prototypes and test tanks. The other piece of equipment on the barge was a rudimentary booster transport stand. It still lacks some hardware and isn't too close to completed, but it's a solid start. So the million dollar question is, when will the deluge hardware be installed? The predictable and unsatisfying answer is, we don't know. But my money is on before the orbital test flight. To round up our update, Booster 9 is being worked on in the Mega Bay for its turn in the test campaign. It's equipped with equipment to support electrical thrust vector control Raptors, and it's presumably having those Raptors installed after passing cryo testing during its recent visit to the launch site. I can't help but wonder if cryo testing of boosters and ships will eventually be moved to the Massey test site to free up the launch site for, well, launches. Speaking of boosters, a new thrust puck was delivered. The thrust puck is the bottom of the aft dome where the center 13 engines attach. You can see all the holes it needs to install all that Raptor plumbing. Finishing up with a farewell to Ship 22, here's a quick shot of its forward dome getting scrapped. It's sad to see it go, but I love the sound of stainless steel rumbling around. All right, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and let us know in the comments what you thought of this new format. And don't forget, head on over to shop.nasaspaceflight.com to grab yourself some sweet Starship merch. I highly recommend the metal prints. We have some out-of-this-world imagery of the recent full-stack wet dress rehearsal. They're easy to hang, they don't need a frame, and they look great. Okay, until the next one, be excellent to each other.